Yeah, no, it's a, I, um, I got married when I was still in college and was working on my senior show, and my husband and I used to, we would meet, he's a personal trainer, and so we would meet to work out, and finally we had to stop because I could not go, like, straight from the studio to the gym and follow instructions. It was, you know, mm. nine, ten hours totally by myself making, and then in a, in a very different way of using my body, and then, you know, right away snapping and switching to someone telling me what to do. I was a disaster. I was like... That's three, funny. three seconds later, I'm like, I have no idea what you just told me to do. <laughs> um, um, yeah, realizing there's this whole brain shift that has to go on before you can enter back into the world of humanity and yeah. have intelligent conversations. Um, yeah. So I have gotten better at, at acknowledging there's a little switch time that needs to do. Yeah, like, a little switching. Yeah. <laughs> Walks are good for that. Yeah. Too. Nice to walk back. And my studio is about. Um, three blocks from here, so it's kind of the perfect time to like shut so, down. So did you decide to run a studio space because you really wanted the separation between your personal life and the job, or did you just also need more space to actually create? It was both. Um, I was literally working on our table that I'm talking to you <laughs> right now, and and then all of my materials were on this wall, okay. and it's just, you know, it's very tiny apartment, and, um, I would be, you know, working on some orders here and then I'd drift over here and see all of, you know, our dirty dishes that I need to get to. And so mm-hmm. it's like, you know, I just couldn't, I couldn't separate my life very well, yeah. you know, and, um, also I, I need to get out of this apartment. <laughs> so it was just also, I think I went through one winter of, of having the studio here and I, kind of just went a little stir crazy. I didn't realize I I wasn't really leaving, Mm -hmm. you know, the space that much when, when you have a lot to do and, you know, (laughs) getting outside, fresh air, seeing other people moving around a little, (laughs) it's nice. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, I I I share it with, um, my friend Susan who makes ceramics and, Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So we, it's nice to have someone in the space too. Mm -hmm. And, we're friends and um, bounce ideas off each other, kind of like in that way that you know students and teachers and that community of critiquing. And yeah, it's nice to be like, hey, what do you think of this? You know. Yeah, so. that's awesome because um, I know that's that's something that a lot of people miss when they leave college. Because in college, you're just you're surrounded by other creative people that can constantly help get you unstuck and give you feedback, and then you graduate and everybody goes mm-hmm. off and. You're like, wait a second, this isn't working, and there's no one here to tell me yeah. why it's not working or to get me out of this place. So yeah. that's really cool to be able to. And I was in school. I feel like I was probably just a little too shy to really be like. I just wasn't speaking up as as much, and I only realized, you know, after I graduated, what what that community, how important that was, mm-hmm. you know, to have that sounding board. So, um, I'm so thankful to have Susan. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, so you've also created some collections for the website of a kind, which is a really cool site and a new way of, of sharing artist work. Um, so what was your process like for working with them and designing for them and, and putting it all together? Um, well, working, it, they're both, Claire and Erica are just so sweet, and um, um, so working with them is is pretty fun, and it's it's a nice process because, or it's nice to think about a piece that is just going to be this one time. Um, it's just you know it's probably just fifty, and um, and so it's kind of a different a different design process in a way because you know you you're you're kind of handing something over forever, you know, you can't make another one. And, right. Um, um, but, yeah, working with them is just, it's its always fun. Um, I don't know if I really answered that completely. Was, um, there, was there another aspect to that? No, that was good. Do you oh. ever find that when you're working for them, since you know that it's a very limited co- collection, that you go a little bit kind of crazier or more playful with the design because... You don't have um, to make 700 of them? Well, yeah, 
Well, they they have a very specific. Um, they well, let's just say it this way. Um, they they really understand who their customer is, which I feel like I've learned a lot from that. You know, paying attention to things, and um, so they they have a pretty clear idea about like what's going to sell, what's not going to sell, and so. Um, they definitely offer up a lot of critique in that way. Like, okay. they're not, um, yeah. <laughs> so it's a little bit more almost like a commission and that you're not just making totally whatever the heck you feel like you're working yeah, with Yeah, it's like we're kind of making it together. Um, mm-hmm. The process is like I will design some samples and they'll look at them and they'll be like, oh, we love this, um, but, you know, we... I think having it in gold, you know, like our customers really like gold and like um, stuff like that. So okay. it's definitely like um, a kind of a partnership, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, as you're making your pieces, do you do you ever feel like you somewhat limit your designs because you are looking at them as as production pieces as opposed to if it was just like, I'm set free to. Yeah. I feel, um, in these last couple of years, I've really made, I tend to make statement pieces, like bigger pieces where I do kind of have more fun. The price points a little higher. So I'm probably, you know, not going to sell as many, but, um, those are like, those are kind of like my heart and soul of, Mm -hmm. of, that's just like the fun work. But then also as I've gotten older, I wear more tiny pieces, more like everyday pieces. And so it's really right now a mix of both of those things. Okay. So, um, I mean, I have fun with, with all of it. The, the bigger pieces are definitely more challenging. Um, and I guess I'm just attracted to the challenge of making something work. Um, but yeah, pe- I would say a majority of, of ladies and the buyers and are looking for like an everyday piece, mm-hmm. more of something under a hundred dollars, um, something you can wear with everything, tiny necklace, little bracelet. Mm-hmm. So cool. Yeah. Uh, so I think one of the main things that everyone that is fairly creative and trying to do a creative business struggles with the the aspect of actually marketing and selling and probably more the business part of it. We're all really good at the making part of it. Um, but then you actually have to, well, you don't have to unless you need to pay your bills, but (laughs) (laughs) you need to get it out there and get people to see it and buy it, which you talked about, um, some in the beginning sort of feeling like it, it just kind of happened. Mm -hmm. Um, that doesn't help anybody. Yeah. So come up with a good idea. So. <laughs> um, I would say for a young designer who is, is starting out, um, it's, I think it's really important to have a really well-designed website, um, excellent photography, and, and don't always assume that you're going to be the best at taking your own photos. And it is an investment, but when you're marketing yourself, and, you know, I would say probably 95% of that marketing is online. Mm-hmm. You have to represent yourself in it, and it's just in wonderful pictures. So that's the only way the customer and the buyers and the bloggers and, and everyone is seeing it. So it needs to be just spot on. Mm-hmm. It's sad to see a really good design and see, a, like, a horrible picture of it. <laughs> do you take your own pictures or do you hire someone for that? <laughs> I, I used to, I tried to learn, you know, the thing is the one thing you learn after doing this for a while, there's only so many things you can do and that you're good at. Um, you know, even like taxes, like, you know, I'm not, (laughs) I'm not an accountant. Um, so there are people who are, and, um, yeah, I tried to take my own photography. Um, I'm okay, but I'm not good. And I, I have a friend who shoots all my product photography and um, model stuff. Cool. Yeah. Um, and it's just it's just the investment that's worth it, you know? Right. Yeah. Over, I feel like a lot of people want to invest in, like, getting a good camera and, like, good lights. And 
I think it's fine if you, you know, take a class and actually learn it, but also understand that that it takes a lot of time, Mm -hmm. the actual shooting it and then Photoshop and everything. So it's, it's just a balance of what you can afford and you're good at. And well, and I, I think it needs to be for all the things that you're looking at sort of outside your actual art making, it also needs to be something you enjoy. I mean, if you don't even enjoy taking the photos, then, then please give it to someone else. I mean, at least if you enjoy it, you can, you can work on learning it, but yeah. if you don't even, if you don't even like it, then don't buy yeah. all the stuff. Just Yeah. <laughs> And there's a lot, you know, f stops. Like it, you know, it's just the the whole language of photography isn't a language that I have. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. yeah. Um. So, since you sort of ha- like you didn't totally solidly start a plan for your business, if you were going back, looking at where you are at this point. Um, are there any things that you would change that you feel like would have just made the transition easier? Um, well, I feel like I want to say yes and no to that, but, um, because I think part of being a business owner is, is being comfortable with taking risks. And so if, so if you're not comfortable with that one aspect, you're just, it's going to be hard to move forward. And, and so, uh, jumping out in the way that I did, it's like definitely not textbook. And, um, I don't think people would use it as an example of how to do something, but, um, if, if you're confident in your work and you're passionate and you're getting good feedback, I don't, I don't think it's, it's that risky to jump out. Um, um, but I think I, I've never, um, when I started, I didn't have a business loan or anything like that. So I was self financing. I think mm-hmm. that would maybe be the one thing I would go back and change, but then not to counterpoint everything that I say, the, the thing about that, that really helped me was that since I didn't have this budget to draw from, mm-hmm. I, um, it really made me critical about the materials I was choosing at first. And so it's nice to have really strict parameters too. you know, like mm-hmm. designing is just, yeah. it's nice to be like, well, okay, well I can afford this chain and, uh, this lace and this dye, and I'm going to try to make that work. Mm-hmm. This is, you know, you know, I've heard horror stories of people who get a business loan and they're like, okay, I need this machinery and I need this tool and I need this fancy thing. And, you know, you don't, you don't actually need that much. Right. If your idea is good and you're, that is kind of all you need, Mm -hmm. you know? No, I think that's, I think making yourself work kind of in those limited constraints can be really good. Um, I know I, I often intentionally kind of set up sort of rules for myself, um, Because it would be easy whenever I'm stuck just to go buy more colors of yarn or different kinds of yarn, but that is always, you know, that's always adding on to the cost, um, and it's Mm -hmm. not pushing me as much in new design. And it's like, it's sort of like you're not tackling the problem in a Mm -hmm. way. It's like you're just, that can be just a way of thinking like you're figuring it out, but you're just, I don't know, you're kind of just wasting time and money or something. I'm normally only allowed to have like a certain amount of yarn in my studio, um, which I will find even really drives me sometimes. I'm like, oh, I want to buy new yarn. Well, I need to use that three more cones before I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> um, but that really forces me to come up with interesting color combinations and, and yeah. designs because I'm like, well, that's what's left on the shelf, and I need to figure out how the heck I'm going to make that work together. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 so true. I, I One of the best lessons I got from art school was like you should, a teacher told the, me in the class that you should be able to make something out of nothing. Mm-hmm. If you can't do that, you can't have the best paints and you can't get the, you know, all this stuff. It's just pricey. You're an artist. You have to figure it out. This is your job. Yes. So, you know, not getting too, um, crazy with the material. I mean, now I'm like, I have folded in a lot, but 
it's taken me a long time to. Well, and I think that was still you. You sort of had your design figured out and and your voice, and then there's nothing wrong with adding the materials, getting better materials, and adding materials into that because you already had something that spoke for itself. I think it becomes a problem when you're just trying to buy lots of fancy materials and having that try and speak for the artwork as opposed yeah. to just making something right really good. Yeah. Um, and then sort of stepping up in the world. Right. Yeah, you just just can't be afraid to jump in. And... I think, um, at least for me, it also, it does, oh, it gives me the freedom to experiment more. I mean, when I buy silk that is crazy expensive, um, I'm like, you know, this piece needs to work because this is a really expensive piece to mess up. <laughs> uh, where when I'm working with some of the not as expensive materials there, I mean, I definitely will do crazier things to them because yeah. it's, it's not as much of a loss. So I think there has to be some totally. of that balance too. And like, well, it's not that big of a deal if I, yeah, yeah, exactly. Totally it ruinous. Just frees you up. I, um, I've started to incorporate more 14 karat gold chain and to some of the tinier pieces. And, you know, I draw jewelry parts are tiny. I drop them all the time. There it goes, you know, and it's like, it's like, Oh my God, you know, and I spend, you know, like a minute finding it or something on the floor. And, you know, I think about that all the time. Like, Oh, what if this was like solid gold or mm. what if I was using like a really, you know, expensive stone, this would be a problem. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I'm not dropping everything on the floor, but it happens. Yeah. It, you know, you just don't worry about it when it's something mm -hmm. else. Yeah. So, um, what are some, do you have any major goals or sort of dreams where you would love to see your jewelry end up? Hmm. Um, I mean, everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, awesome. I mean, yeah, I feel like I just... Where would it end up? I'm sorry, I'm thinking about that. Um, okay. I f just more of the same. I, one of my favorite things is um, being a part of some of these online shops that are just really well curated or mm -hmm. physical brick and mortar shops as well because it's like they're they're really having fun with it and they're picking out their favorite designers and it's just it's really nice to be a part of that and. Mm -hmm. I would love to get into some more shops like that. Um, um, but yeah, I just want to do more orders and bigger orders and hire an employee and, and yeah. Are you part of um, like any sort of artist groups or jewelry groups that you sort of network with or, or learn from or is it just like a group of friends? Um. I have, well, here's the other part of, we kind of talked a little bit about mar our marketing and networking. Mm -hmm. um, that's another part of how I've really grown. I think, I think in school I was really um, kind of grossed out about the idea of networking. It just felt weird. Like, let's go to this gallery and then meet this person. And I, was, and I just didn't feel real. Yeah. Um, but when I started my business and started linking up with some other design businesses, um, it's nice to be a part of a community like that, even if, you know, you don't know each other and it's just online. Mm -hmm. uh, but people, I mean, that's just, just a great way to, to uh, another way to get your work out there and seeing because, you know, people talk and share and, um, but it's, so that, that's been really nice. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I took that question in a different direction. That's what okay. would be initial question um well like i'm in pennsylvania there's the pennsylvania guild of craftsmen mm -hmm. that i'm a part of or like the american craft council are there any of those things that you're a member of or part of that you find helpful no i'm not i'm not a part of any um official group like that um in our studio building so it's it's me and susan and the next door is another jewelry designer mm -hmm. and i have a lot of artist friends so i um we're like our own unofficial group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, talking shop and talking business and stuff is mm -hmm. 
funny when we, you know, do have like a girls lunch or something, it's all just like talking business. I feel like people have an idea of what girls talk about at lunch, but you know, I think a lot of women, you know, are pretty serious about what they're doing in there. If you were listening on our conversation, it would be like, well, you know, what are you doing for that order? And, you know, how are you redoing your line sheets? It's just like, it's just talking business the whole time, and it's really nice. Yeah, yeah. Learning from each other. Mm-hmm. I think that's, you know, that, that's so helpful and kind of what you have to do. And everybody has, everybody has a different story and a different way that they've kind of made things work for them. Um, but I find there's still always, you know, something that you can get from somebody else. They're like, oh, that's an interesting way of looking at it, partly because I think so many people now are doing it that, like you said, you don't have any business training, and so there's these very kind of creative ways about going about making it happen and not following specific rules, because you don't even know what the rules are. (laughs) Yeah, I kind of think there aren't any, and if somebody, if somebody's trying to tell you this is the way that you do it, they're, they're probably trying to sell you a book, or they're trying to sell you their service, Mm -hmm. um, you know, so there's no right way and no wrong way, and it's your way, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think you, well, I think that is part of the. I mean, that's that's part of the fun of working for yourself is that you are hopefully making a business that actually fits your personality and that is working for you, and not what somebody else said to do. Because then you might as well go work for somebody else. Yeah, yeah, and I um. I had like a PR rep uh, last year for like half the year and um, there were many aspects of it that were good, but we, we weren't really like a good fit um, mm-hmm. ultimately. So that can be weird when you feel like somebody is, is representing you publicly, but they're, they're just, they just don't quite get what, you know, cursive is all about and like what I've built it up to be. So, mm-hmm. um, it was just a confusing mix. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. But I'm sure I could find the right person someday. It's just a matter of finding them. Yeah, no, I'm sure it's kind of, uh, I mean, at some point I would love to have somebody taking care of some of those things for me. But, um, yeah, it's a process of finding someone who actually gets you because part of pe- what people love about your jewelry is they love you and the story that you're putting behind it. And so... When you, as the person, are part of the brand, that you have to find someone else that still is able to sound like you, yeah, um, and not like a completely different right person, yeah, yeah, or yeah, just not getting the story and getting it wrong, representing it wrong, yeah, yeah. yeah.